welcome back and in this video I will talk about one of the main, the first proofs for the best choice of coefficients beta 0 and beta 1 in a simple linear regression. So this is one of the basic and first proofs that you do if you are started taking econometrics. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, pretty important, I hope this will be useful. So simple linear regression, let's just remind ourselves what that is, suppose we have data, we have two variables, x and y, and for each variable we have some kind of value. Uh, for example, we have observations about many alligators and each alligator has length and weight. So we have those measurements, uh, log of length and log of weight. This is alligator number one, this is alligator number two, this is alligator number three, and so on. Uh, well, we're interested in a relationship between these variables and we might hypothesize that the weight of the alligator depends on its length and we want to find out how we can model the weight based on length. So if we know uh, the length of the alligator and we don't know his weight, can we predict his length uh, just based on the weight? Well, for that we need a model. So if we assume a linear relationship, then we could say that, well, we know linear is y equals ax plus b, where a and b are constants. So if we're assuming a linear relationship, then we might say that weight equals some constant beta 0 times length uh, plus another constant beta 1. So again, that's our data for each alligator. We have two variables. This is alligator 1, this is alligator 2, this is alligator n. We have log of length and log of a weight. So let's just write it as weight equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times length uh, plus some error term. And so we need the error term because to get the exact weight from length, we're not going to have a perfect model. So if we calculate some numbers for beta 0 and beta 1, which are constants, and then we calculate this part, well, we're not going to get the exact correct weight for each alligator, so that's why there will be some error term. So the general formula for some variables x and y, if we think that y depends on x, then for the simple linear regression, um, yeah, in the most basic form we just have x here, it's not x squared or anything, but it could be, I'm just making an example of like, the most basic uh, form, so y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi plus e, which is the error term, and the i here, well that stands for the specific observation, so such as y1, uh, if i equals 1 equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x1 plus epsilon 1. So, okay, for example, we assume this model, okay, great, but what are these beta 0 and beta 1? So they're constants, they're some kind of numbers that we think would work best to describe in general the relationship between x and y for the data that we have, but how do we choose the best beta 0 and beta 1 to describe the relationship? Well, ideally we wouldn't want to have any errors in our prediction, so we would want all our error terms to be zero. Uh, we would want to perfectly predict y if we're only given x. So for example, if we're just giving the length of the alligator, we would want to have a model so we perfectly predict uh, his weight. But probably that's not possible. So we will have some errors for each observation. And that's what tells us how bad or good our model is. If each time for each observation, our error is really large, so the predicted value of y is really far from the actual, then our model is not really good. So we have to take into account all these error terms for all the observations. And therefore a proposed good measure of our model, how well it's doing, is the squared sum of errors. So because remember errors are bad, that means we didn't predict well the y, we would like to actually minimize these errors and because we have many observations, we have to take into account all the error terms. So a proposed measure is to minimize the sum of squared errors. And remember, yi equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi plus ei. So therefore, 
the specific air for a given observation i equals y i minus beta zero plus beta one times x i. So therefore, this is our air e i, and we're just squaring it because we're trying to minimize the square sum of airs, and we're squaring it because I remember that the air could be positive or negative, so it could be under predicting or over predicting the actual y value and if we would just add them up without squaring well the negatives and positives would cancel each other out so we would actually get a lower number and that would be an issue because both errors are bad it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative it's still an error uh, so that's why we want to square them um, it's just a good option to have them squared and instead of taking the absolute value it makes it easier to derive the first order conditions which you'll see in a second as i just note about the distribution uh, in the linear regression the error terms are assumed to be independently identically distributed so the error term for one observation doesn't depend on the error term for another they're supposed to be uncorrelated and they're assumed to follow a normal distribution so we assume that the error terms follow normal distribution with mean zero and variance sigma squared. Uh, well, that actually implies that the y's also follow a normal distribution with mean uh, beta zero plus beta one times xi and variance sigma squared. But here in this video, I just focus on deriving the best coefficients beta 0 and beta 1. So this is just showing how y values are distributed. So if we have alligators, uh, the x is the length. Uh, so for each length, we could have multiple weights, right? Because we have many alligators and it's possible that in alligators, two alligators have the same length, but different weights. Um, so that's why you see this sort of picture and our assumption is that these y's they're near the they're around the mean which is beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi right and there are few which are further away from the mean but most of them are around the mean that's how the normal distribution is and so back to the problem in deriving our beta 0 and beta 1 coefficients in simple linear regression. So we want to minimize the squared sum, same that should be sum, of errors because we decided that's the best measure of how well our model is doing in terms of predicting the y values. So yi equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi plus ei, where i is specific observation. So we're minimizing the sum of squared errors. And this is how we write out uh, the error just from the equation above. So in order to minimize the function, remember how to find the minimum or maximum. Uh, we want to differentiate the function with respect to beta 0 and beta 1 and set the derivatives equal to 0. Because if we have a function and we want to find the minimum, the derivative, which is the rate of change here, is equal to 0. So that's why we do that. So we want df uh, with respect to d beta 0 equal to 0 and also set df with respect to beta 1 equal to 0 where our function is the one above is the sum of uh, squared errors which we wrote as this. So now let's uh, differentiate the function uh, with respect to the coefficients. So first let's solve for beta 0. So let's take the derivative of the function with respect to beta 0. So remember first, if it's x squared, if we take the derivative, we get 2x. And then we have to differentiate inside the brackets. So here we don't have beta 0. We have it here, this is minus beta zero. So derivative of minus beta zero with respect to beta zero equals minus one. 
So that's how we have the minus 2 here. Because we got 2 from differentiating the whole expression. And then we got a negative 1. And this is our x. Because remember here we have 2x. So we're left with this expression inside the brackets. And it's still a sum from i equals 1 to n. So now we want to set this derivative uh, to 0 and solve for beta 0. So set this expression equal to 0. Then we can divide both sides by negative 2. So it will just go away uh, because here we still have 0. Uh, therefore, we end up uh, with this summation equal to 0. And we have to solve for beta 1, so let's open the brackets. So first we have summation of yi from i equal 1 to n. Then we have a summation of beta 0, which actually uh, doesn't depend on i. And then we have summation of beta 1 times xi, and this should be equal to 0. So let's move this term uh, to another side of the equation, and it becomes positive. So what is the summation of beta 0? Well, it doesn't depend on i, it just means we take beta 0 n times. So that's why we have here n times beta 0 equals the summation of yi's. Beta 1 is constant, we can take it outside the bracket. So here we're still left with this term. Uh, and let's just divide by n. So here we just have beta 0 on its own. Here we get this term and this term. Well, actually, 1 over n, summation of i equals 1 to n of yi is just y1 plus y2 plus plus yn divided by n. Well, that's the definition of mean of y. That's why here it's we can put y bar. That's just the mean of the variable y. And same here, we have beta 1 times 1 over n summation of xi's. Well, this is just the mean of x of the variable x. So here we derived a beta 0, it equals to the y bar minus beta 1 times x bar. But we still don't know what's beta 1, so that's what we have to solve for next. So now we have to differentiate the function with respect to beta 1. Remember first, the 2 goes in the front. That's how we got a 2 here, because our expression is squared. And then we have to look inside the brackets and differentiate with respect to beta 1. Well, here there's no beta 1, so the derivative is 0. Same here. But here we have beta 1 times x. Well, the derivative of that is just xi. Right? So that's why now we have xi outside the brackets. And we're still left uh, with this function, which used to be squared. Okay, so now we want to set uh, this derivative equal to 0 and solve for beta 1. Well, again, we took out one of the terms and put it to the other side. So here we just have summation xi times yi. Uh, because if you go back here, see, we can, op we can get rid of this uh, minus 2, right? Because we just divide both sides by minus 2 and then we can open the brackets. So, okay, first term, xi times yi minus beta 0 summation xi, because remember we have this xi in front of the brackets, and then minus plus, so we have minus, we can take beta 1 outside. xi times xi, we have xi squared, and on this side we have equal to 0, and in the next slide I just take these terms to the other side to get rid of the minus signs. Yeah, so this is what I just got. Uh, but let's actually isolate the term with beta 1. So this equals, let's bring this to the other side. So this term equals summation xi times yi minus beta times summation of xi. Well, actually, from the previous calculation, we already know that beta 0 equals y bar minus beta 1 times x bar. Well, that actually means we 
because this is y bar minus beta 1 right so we already know what beta 1 is and that's why instead of uh, sorry that's what beta 0 is so that's why we insert it here instead of beta 0 and now that looks a bit complicated but we want to have beta 1 on the left side and everything else on the right side so let's look here we have a beta 1 term uh, we also have one here this is minus minus so that's a plus and if we bring it to the other side it becomes minus so and also here we have 1 over n but let's just multiply everything by n so we don't have the fraction there so that's how we get this term here we took beta 1 outside the brackets we multiplied by n so we have n times summation of xi squared this term went to this side so multiplied by n we have 1 and this is the summation of xi uh, squared because remember uh, we just have this term outside the brackets so we multiplied this by this okay well here multiplied by n so we have n summation xi times yi minus summation yi times summation xi well now it's very easy to see what beta 1 is equal to so now to isolate beta 1 we just divide both sides by this term and we end up with this expression for beta 1 so now see it only depends on all the variables that we know because we have our data remember we have the observations for the variable x so those are actual values we have the values for y we know how many observations we have so we can just use our data to calculate this expression and we'll get beta 1 so first using our data we have x1 y1 xn yn we know what n is we calculate beta 1 from this expression then we can calculate the mean of y the mean of x and we already calculated beta 1 so then we calculate beta 0 and um yeah x bar is the mean of x it's the summations of x i over n and y bar is the mean of y uh, yeah so here we derived our first order conditions for the simple linear regression so now we know how to calculate the coefficients beta 0 and beta 1 that minimize our sum of squared errors which we decided was a good estimation for how well our model is doing